On June 11, 2022, a supercell tracked across eastern Kansas, spinning up tornadoes and producing extensive rear flank downdraft straight line wind damage. As the storm swelled up to many, many miles in diameter, it put on incredible scenery and was visible from over 100 miles away in multiple locations. Storms were set to fire off in a very moist environment aided by the forcing and wind shear generated by a shortwave trough. On the afternoon of June 11th, an unstable air mass was in place across the plains and Midwest, with dew points in the 70s and Cape, aka the energy source for thunderstorms, reached 6,000 and even near 7,000 joules per kilogram. There was also a decent amount of wind shear, but not a tremendous amount near the surface. If we take a look at weather balloon data from early to mid-afternoon, we notice that there is strong cape, deep moisture, wind veering, and a slight capping inversion to help keep the atmosphere locked and loaded. Data from the evening now shows explosive amounts of cape without capping inversions to suppress storms. A surface low over Nebraska, along with a shortwave trough, was set to encourage explosive thunderstorm formation. At 3.35 p.m., a tornado watch was issued as the first storms were initiating. At this time, a trio of supercell thunderstorms had begun to get going in southeastern Nebraska. These cells began to mature and fight to the death over which one would dominate. The middle of the three storms began to win the fight as they approached Kansas, and it began consuming the other storms and the surrounding energy. The storm dropped enormous hail over the town of Beatrice, Nebraska, up to five inches in diameter. As the storm crossed the border, it produced a brief tornado, snapping a large tree and destroying an outbuilding. The storm continued to strengthen as it moved south into Marysville, Kansas, where another tornado would impact businesses, crumbling a wall and removing the roof from a brick building. The storm cycled and also produced an EF0 tornado nearby. The storm would spin up another EF1 tornado causing lots of tree damage near Blue Rapids, Kansas, and flipping train cars. The supercell cycled yet again and dropped another tornado on Swede Road and tracked due south causing outbuilding and tree damage and also damaging a grain bin near Tuttle Creek Lake before lifting. The strongest tornado from this storm was next and dropped down right into Manhattan, Kansas, where it would inflict EF2 damage to many roofs and trees. The storm eventually produced one more tornado in Riley County, Kansas before becoming an outflow dominant thunderstorm and losing strength. However, tornado damage was not the only story. Another damaging feature of many supercells is straight line winds which can come from the rear flank downdraft or RFD. Like most things about this storm, the RFD was supersized. The massive rain filled RFD could be noted by the unusually large hook echo on radar with any possible tornadoes being invisible and rain wrapped by the wet RFD. The straight line winds were concluded to be over 80 miles per hour in multiple places and acted like a mini bow echo or intense line of storms. These winds caused widespread damage to outbuildings and also countless trees. The scale of this mammoth supercell was visible from miles and miles around treating prairie dwellers and Midwesterners to spectacular scenery. In my first picture that I took of the storm from 100 miles away, the anvil looms overhead at around 40,000 feet, higher than the cruising altitude of most airliners, and it stretched behind me to the edge of the eastern horizon. From my next vantage point, the silhouette of the storm was visible, along with the outer edge of the anvil cloud on the other side. When storms this strong swell up to this size, they can cause charge imbalances throughout the anvil cloud, resulting in truly colossal lightning discharges. Looking west in this picture, the left edge of the storm is now less sharp, as the storm has moved south, causing the rainfall to block the updraft of the thunderstorm from my vantage point. You can still see the sun-colored anvil cloud, along with the sky underneath it. Now let's take a look from someone who is much closer. This was taken just east of Manhattan, Kansas, around 7.30 p.m. or so, looking west. Note how the storm's orange-lit anvil is still clearly visible on the left. You can also see the bump-like Mamatis clouds underneath it. On the right side of the frame is the thunderstorm's main updraft, 
along with the rear flank core and heavy wind and rain underneath it. Thank you to KC Tomato's niece for letting me use this photo. From space, the scale of this storm system was no less fascinating. Taken by a GOES satellite, this image shows a huge anvil cloud casted by the supercell updraft stretching from central Kansas to eastern Missouri, and the storm was so big that it cast a shadow into Arkansas. Thank you National Weather Service Topeka for allowing me to use your damaged pictures. Thankfully, no lives were lost by this costly severe weather event, and all the tornadoes stayed below violent levels. Thank you for watching and take care.